Um, okay, so I'm going to be talking about quantum error correction. We've seen this come up a couple of times already in Gemma's talk and in the talk by Lohan as well recent. Well, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about what error correction is, why it's necessary, and finish with some recent developments. So yeah, um, why do we need error correction then? Well, if we look at certain app, well, we can look at some of the applications where quantum computers are expected to deliver the most significant impact. You know, applications such as understanding physical systems, so catalyst reactions or um, molecular dynamics. And these have applications in problems such as drug discovery or material sciences. And when you go through all of the numbers, you find that these require tens of tens if not hundreds of thousands of qubits and many orders of quantum gates. And then you compare that to other applications such as so trying to solve nonlinear differential equations, which again is a general problem that can have applications in computational fluid dynamics and plasma physics. And again, this requires hundreds of qubits and orders of magnitude of quantum gates. And so the que this is where quantum computing can be quite a challenge because errors can accumulate during a quantum computation. So you might start off with this perfect, completely flawless qubit, but over time that qubit will start to decohere. If you're working with something like neutral atoms, then you might lose the qubit completely, or your qubit might go into a leak state, a state which is not part of your computation. And so all of these things can add up to creating a qubit which is noisy and imperfect and can't be used in your computation. So how bad are these errors in practice? Well, let's do a back of the envelope calculation here. Um, let's start off with just one qubit. And <coughs> if we assume that the probability of an error on this one qubit is 0.1%, well, after one gate applied to this qubit, 99.9% .9 of the time, there isn't an error. So you know, that's not, that's good. Okay, but let's say we want to apply 100 gates to this one qubit then. Well, the probability of us seeing no error after 100 quantum gates is now about 90%, which is tolerable, like it's not perfect, but you can manage with that. Now let's suppose that we scale up to 50 qubits. Again, this is smaller than any of the applications we've been talking about. But at 50 qubits and 100 gates, we're now starting to look at less than 1% chance of no error. And this is still significantly smaller than the applications I mentioned before where we're looking at thousands of qubits and 10 to the 10 gates. So, how can we correct for these errors then? How can we better tolerate them? Well, in classical information, Haitian theory, the simplest way you can correct for errors is by repeating your data. So you can represent a logical zero qubit, logical zero bit as just multiple copies of multiple physical bits all set to zero and the logical one bit is multiple physical bits all set to one. And then if errors occur on any of your individual bits, you can correct for these by taking a majority vote. And if you do some calculations, you find that there's, depending on what noise model you choose, there's this break even point, which we call a threshold, where below oh, this, we can see that as you increase the number of classic physical bits to represent your logical data, your logical error probability reduces. And so this can allow us to get arbitrarily low uh, probability of a logical error. There are two problems with applying this to quantum computing, however. First of all, where this requires us to take, look at our physical bits and take a majority vote, 
but looking at a quantum bit changes the state. So how can we work around and that? And secondly, even if we could um, look at our qubits and take a majority <laughs> vote, quantum states cannot be cloned. And so we, ne uh, we can't pick the most common state and repeat that. So how can we do a quantum repetition code in practice then? Well, rather than just repeating our quantum state multiple times, we can choose an initial state to repeat, such as maybe the zero state. And we're not going to take a majority vote this time. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to measure pairs of these qubits to check for bit flips in them. And the result of this, so we can use this, we don't figure out, learn what the specific values are, we just learn is the value of this qubit different from the value of this qubit. And so the result of this is one logical qubit which is immune to bit flips. But it provides the disadvantage that there are other errors such as the phase flips that Laurent mentioned, which this qubit is, Im is not immune to. And so, thankfully, we can also correct for these using a similar idea, where rather than initializing our qubits in the zero state, we initialize them in this uniform superposition of zero and one. And then, rather than measuring to check for bit flips between pairs of qubits, we check for phase flips between them. And this gives us a logical qubit which is immune to phase flips, but no longer immune to bit flips. So how can we protect across both of these errors then? Well, rather than just represent repeating our qubits in a line, let's repeat them in a 2D grid. And we're going to do two qubit measurements along the sides. So these are a combination of bit and fl phase flip measurements. And we're going to apply four qubit measurements in the middle between these different sets of qubits. And the result of this is a code better known as the surface code. So this is a very popular way of correct implementing error correction and, and thinking about quantum error correction in practice where each of these corners represents a physical qubit and we deter check for errors by measuring across these squares and triangles. And this is very practical both in correcting other errors, not just the ones as I've talked about here, and also in terms of its low connectivity requirements. You only need a nearest neighbor 2D grid architecture to be able to implement this. So I'm going to now switch gears a bit and talk about some recent developments in quantum error correction. So first of all, we've seen a lot of hardware experiments now demonstrating the error correction in practice. So this is taken from a recent paper by Google where they looked at scaling up a surface code logical qubit and reducing the logical error rate as a result. And there's also been a lot of work on resource estimation. So trying to figure out the actual overhead of implementing a fault tolerant algorithm on an error correcting code. But there's a large amount of difference between these small scale experiments on our, my left here and these larger scale, larger applications which um, to solve key problems. So what can we do in the middle then? Um, so this is a couple of recent developments that we've done at River Lane. So first of all, we've looked at not just keeping a qubit alive for longer, but how can we actually run logical operations on an error correcting code? So this is taken from a recent paper of, paper of ours looking at trying to simulate the logical Hadamard gate on the surface code. And at the other end, we've also looked at not just estimating resource counts for large scale applications, 
but seeing how detailed we can get with a small scale application. So estimating the ground state energy of the hydrogen molecule on an error corrected quantum computer. I'm just going to finish quickly with my call to action, which is that in the long run, we want to be able to integrate quantum error correction into data centers. And there's lots of open questions here. So first of all, quant fault tolerant quantum computing requires a lot of both quantum and classical resources. How can we best split those within a data center environment? We also want to be looking at not, we don't want to just fit all of our qubits into a single di processor. So how can we distribute and network quantum devices in a da data center and implement error correction on top of that? And also, we're not just targeting a single hardware platform here. We've got people working on cat qubits like Alice and Bob. We've got superconducting. We've got trapped ions. How can we correct errors across all of these different hardware types? Thank you.